So my name is Garner Powell, and today I'm going to be talking about exploring the toxicity of Gloriosa superba. So the botanical description of this plant, um, first of all, it has many names like creeping lily, beggar claw, fire lily, um, and you'll kind of see why it gets that name here in a second. Uh, it's a per perennial herb with vine-like growth. It's a monocot plant. It has alternating leaves, uh, and on the end of the leaf, there's a tendril that kind of curls up. Um, the flowers have six tepals, which are basically just the petals, uh, which are red with a wavy yellow margin. Uh, and the anthers come out of the bottom of the flower. Um, and then the vine can get up to six feet in length. So I took this picture from the left uh, straight from Wikipedia, which just shows you the uh, botanical classification. Um, it's in the uh, Colachisiae family. I know I butchered that, but it's actually not a true lily, um, which I thought was interesting. But here's a picture of the flower, um, and you can see um, the wavy margins of the petals and then the anthers coming out of the bottom. So the range of this plant, um, it was first described in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. Um, it, but it was only introduced to Florida, which then it has uh, since spread uh, to many of the other southern states, southeastern states. Um, and this plant is pretty hardy. It can grow uh, in many different soils and many different um, kind of soil qualities. Um, and the plant is mainly pollinated by butterflies and small birds. So this plant is extremely toxic and all parts of this plant are toxic, um, especially the tubers, um, which are found underground. Um, and the main two toxins are um, colachicine and gloriosine, which are uh, toxic alkaloids. Um, and these have been used for um, murder and suicide throughout some histories. Um, and the mode of action is that this this toxin actually affects, uh, or these toxins rather, affect the membrane of the cell and it inhibits the cell's ability to synthesize uh, membrane constituents, which are basically just proteins and, and other sorts of things within the cell wall. Um, so you can understand how, much, how this can be detrimental to the cell because it basically stops the cell from uh, functioning. Um, symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea, uh, which lead to dehydration, and then severe symptoms can uh, start to affect the respiratory, circulatory, and nervous system, uh, which can lead to failure, which can then ultimately lead to seizures, coma, and death. Uh, and an interesting fact is that this poison was used um, on arrows in Nigeria. So there is a medicinal value of this plant. Um, there's anti-malarial uh, juice, which is made by the Yulanga people from Tanzania, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's also used to ease coughs uh, and just general pain in the Ivory Coast. And the juice from its leaves are used to uh, kind of wake people up who have fainted, kind of like a smelling salt almost. And then, and then also in Zambia, uh, juice from the leaves uh, can sometimes either just be mixed into a paste or applied with butter, and it can be applied to the face and scalp to get rid of acne and lice. So it has a lot of other um, medicinal uses. And there are my sources. Thank you.